Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, plus so much more, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm awesome, Sauce Nathan. How are you? I'm good for the video only podcast people. You're wearing a shirt that says Dixon Cider. Dickens Cider. Dickens Cider. It's actually a local company. You should know these guys. We're both from the same state. I was going to say, is that like a, a local brew here in Colorado? Yeah, it's hard cider. <laughs> uh-huh, hard, cider. <laughs> hard cider. Okay, cool. Uh, that's a great way to start off the podcast. What do we have on the agenda for today's show? Ownership. Becoming the dictator or the director of your own life. Is that why you wore the shirt? I can do what I want. <laughs> okay, so ownership, be the dictator of your own life. Man, I don't even know where you're going to go with this one. I have to be completely honest. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since we recorded a podcast and we're out of step a little bit. And we didn't get our our normal conversation in before we started recording the podcast, but the last few episodes that we've recorded are heading in a direction, something that's a little bit more interesting for me. I think everything comes from the relationship that we have with ourselves, right? Client acquisition and doing that well and it being awesome and charging the prices that you're worth and all of that shit is secondary or even tertiary, which for those of you that don't know is third, right? Totally being a dick. That all comes after you're good with yourself. And the sales gorilla is a pillar of my world, sales and marketing, client acquisition. That's one of the things that I do. But ultimately, it all comes from the relationship that we have with ourselves, how we are, how we treat ourselves, what we do for ourselves. All of that stuff comes first. And all of the quote unquote results people see in their external world come after we take care of those things. And um, I got some comments. I got a couple of people even email me the call to actions in the last couple of emails were I do some stuff at a higher level. If that's interesting, send me an email. And um, through some back and forth, kind of what I started to notice and, and I've been thinking about this for a while is we're all just a bunch of angry, insecure, upset, sideways kids running around in adult bodies right? The vast majority of people, regardless of what level of success they've hit, their inner child is not awesome sauce all the time. And the reason for that is simply the lack of ownership. I mean, we've heard it stated in a million different ways, taking responsibility for yourself, right? Radical ownership, radical honesty, all of those, it's all the same shit, right? You're a fucking grown up. You get out of bed. You do the stuff that you need to do. And if you're intelligent and intentional with the shit that you need to do, that's taking ownership. And this is kind of, you know, this is the foundation of what it takes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm going to go back to when I was a little kid. We used to live in California and. I had this huge dream of if I could watch Karate Kid enough times or like Three Ninjas enough times that I could do the moves out in the front yard and a Hollywood producer would be driving by as I was practicing my karate out in the front yard. And then he would be like, yo, that kid's going to be our next movie star. And I know a lot of people that have that same mindset where if I just do the minimal amount, somebody else is going to make it happen for me. And it wasn't until I broke free of that mindset that I realized how important it was to start actually making things happen for myself. What are your thoughts on that? Ain't nobody else going to do it for you. You mentioned there's actually two things in there and I want to unpack them. One is minimal amount of work. The people that do the minimum, get the minimum. Like That's just how it works. Um, nobody, nobody's going to do it for you. There's a lot of people in our lives that to one extent or another, we rely upon for different things. The truth is, all of that shit that we get from other people, we have to be better than them at giving ourselves that whatever. Most people aren't. 
Most people are disgruntled 14 year old kids that have an angry inner child, five year old, and they're all bent out of shape and they're going to do the minimum job and their life kind of reflects that. The other thing in there that I wanted to unpack is you mentioned if you just went out in your front yard and practiced this over and over and over and over and over and over and over, it's practice. You're a practitioner at your thing, Nathan. You're a practitioner. You fucking practice it all the time. You didn't like, you know, buy an ebook on whatever about how to do podcasts and you read it twice and, and here you are. You've practiced your craft. Guess what, dude? The ultimate craft is the relationship you have with yourself, your body, your mind, and your spirit. Most of us don't practice taking care of ourselves really at all. And a lot of people just kind of put in the minimum effort and it shows. Ooh. <laughs> I think there, there goes half the audience landing. <laughs> it is what it is. I think a lot of it comes down to also we want somebody who we can trust to do it for us. We want, oh, a Hollywood producer can make me famous better than I can make myself famous. Or a, a doctor can make me healthy better than I can make myself healthy. Or a guru can show me the way better than I can find the way for myself. A lot of times we look at something and we're like, oh, I could never do that by myself. I need somebody else to make it happen for me. Weak sauce. And you got me to mention the five-year-old, the 14-year-old, and now we're talking about the 40-year-old, right? So there's the child, the adolescent, and the adult version of ourselves. Yeah, cool. Nobody else is going to do it for you. You might be able to have somebody come over and shovel your snow or mow your grass or clean the house or whatever, but you can't outsource taking care of your body. You can't outsource directing your mind. Like You can't have somebody else do that for you. And it's a bullshit excuse that we need somebody else because we don't know how to do it ourselves. Everybody listening to this podcast has access to Google. Guess what? The knowledge of what to do and how to do it, it's there. You could go learn how to rebuild an automatic transmission out of a 79 full-size Bronco on fucking YouTube. Like the info's out there. It's the decision and the choice to do what's best for us and then follow through and practice whatever that little bit of information is. A lot of people won't do that for themselves or they do the minimal effort and that just sucks. All right. So you've been listening to this episode. If you like what we do and what we're talking about here, check this out. We're all about getting clients without being salesy. And since I hate prospecting, and I love technology, we've developed a way to get you clients without you having to cold outreach to people and feel all weird about it. You can get that framework by going to the salesgorilla.com forward slash GAN, which stands for Gorilla Army Nation. Yep. The salesgorilla.com forward slash G-A-N. Now back to the podcast. One thing that I've noticed, especially now you mentioned how much of the information is available that wasn't, I mean, 20 years ago, people would shit their pants looking at how much resources we have at our fingertips nowadays. A lot of times when you first start looking into something, it's this giant thing and you're like, that's so difficult. But once you start actually taking steps and once you start figuring out, oh, I can do this. Oh, now I can do this next step. It ends up being a lot simpler than it looks like when we first unpackage this giant new thing that we're interested in. Yeah. The idea that things are hard and difficult and complicated, like, look, nobody's, nobody's uh, a paper route boy hoping to be a neuroscience doctor thinking they're going to download an ebook from the internet, watch a couple of YouTube videos and go do surgery on somebody's brain. Like, duh. The vast majority of the shit we're all trying to accomplish in our lives is actually really fucking simple. It's actually really fucking simple. But we put it off till tomorrow. We won't take the time to do it. Like we make things so complicated because we don't know how to do something. Obviously it's got to be really hard and difficult and there's a million steps to it. It's just not the case. So I have gone through this going through your world. I think we've probably brought it up on the podcast, but when I first got into your world, you were like, here, Nathan, this is all you have to do. You need to post like this. You need to post like this. When somebody raises their hands, you need to approach them like this and you need to say this. And if someone reach out, reaches out to you, handle it like this. 
And I had a roadmap for like six months before I was finally willing to do it. Just some thoughts on, like you mentioned, that it's there. Everything is there. You can learn everything. It's at, it's at your fingertips. But so many people still, even if they have the drive and the desire and the resources and, and the information, they still just don't. Scurred. And side note, by the way, a little plug for Leads Lab. Now that you're doing the doing and you've been doing it for a little bit, how's that working for you? It's working amazing. Right. Is it difficult? Mm, not really. No, it's it was difficult to turn it into a pattern or a behavior. Oh, uh, now we're talking about practice. Yes, I get it. The actual act of getting over yourself and stepping outside of what you were scared about was the big step that you had to take. But once you took that step, fucking posting on social media and having conversations with people that dig what you're talking about, is that hard? Not at all. Right. And practicing it and getting into the habit of it and building a, a ritual around it that's you and just like you is actually kind of as simple as just being who the fuck you are, right? Mm -hmm. Amazing. That's the thing. Scurred. And even for the people that are listening that have been in my world for long enough that aren't doing the doing, and there's a few of you because I watch, there's nothing to be afraid of. Like there's a lot of people on this planet that don't dig you, whether they've met you yet or not. That's just how it goes. And that's okay. But there's an equal, if not bigger group of people that actually really kind of like what you do. They just don't know you exist. Stop being scared. Put yourself out there. It's simple. So I want to hit two points before we're out of here. And I want to kind of circle back to what we started off the show with. Making that a practice, making it something that you do. You mentioned, oh, I get up. I, you know, I make sure before this particular time in the day, I've done this, this, and this. What are your thoughts on people that have all that knowledge and they just still haven't taken that step and, and turned it into behaviors? Well, either they actually don't want what they said they want or they're scared. Like, do you brush your teeth every day, Nathan? Yes, sir. Do you eat and drink water every day? Yes, sir. Cool. Are you one of those people that makes your bed when you get out of bed in the morning? Not every morning. Okay. Do you put your shoes away when you take them off or you just like kick them across the house? I put them away. Cool. So when you make dinner, do you do the dishes and clean up the kitchen? Yep. Right. So is that hard? No. Once you've started it as a practice, but I'm talking about turning it into a practice. Uh -huh. Yep. So there was a point in time when you moved out of your parents' house, when you first lived by yourself, probably living with a roommate or a brother or half a dozen guys, right? Did that too. And eventually you get to a point where you're like, this is fucking gross. Like we're making dinner on Thursday and we haven't cleaned up dishes since Monday. And eventually you're like, okay. And you just start doing the dishes. It's no different. The people that are listening to this are, are probably business owners, right? It, here's what it comes down to getting the right message in front of the right person at the right time. Well, if you don't put the message out and you don't make a habit of that and you don't turn that into a practice, guess what? No clients. Mm -hmm. So that step, that first step, it's like jumping into the deep end, right? Plug your nose and fucking jump in with both feet. If it goes wrong, you can delete it. Like we're not talking about, you know, you're carving something into your chest. Like you can fix it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think people don't realize. In fact, that's actually very accurate. Somebody that I was talking to earlier today has an audience well known and was like, man, I just don't want to say something. That's the wrong thing. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? It's the internet. What are you going to say? That's that wrong that now your business is broken. Are you out of your goddamn mind? And I think a lot of people just like, it's, it's the finality of it. That actually doesn't exist. And Oh, by the way, if you do say something wrong and you piss somebody off, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so he, I think what all of this really comes back to and just to bring it full circle is in about 80 to 90% of your life, we do have the power to mold our own existence, mold our own destiny and say, Hey, I want to do this. I have the ability to figure out how to do it. All I have to do is do it, but I have to change a couple of things in my life. 
Mm-hmm. I just want to get your final thoughts on that as we're out of here. The bottom line is it's a choice and we all have a choice. And there's two categories that we make choices around shit that we're interested in and things we'll actually commit to. And generally that latter category is a much smaller category than the former. We're all interested in all kinds of things. What are we actually going to buckle down and commit to? That's what it comes down to. Nice. Okay. For the people that were listening to this and they want to find out more, where can they go to get more of Landon Porter and your whole thing? And my whole thing, the whole thing can be found currently on Facebook. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Currently on Facebook. Okay. And until next time, if you want more, check out salesgorillapodcast.com and we'll catch you later, man. Peace out, Cub Scout. Hey, if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. This is the Copy and Funnels Podcast Network.